this is guitarist Dennis Tafe, and I want to welcome you to b another episode of Bargain Bin Amps. And this time around, we're going to look at a real budget amp. And um, funny how these things happen, um, totally out of the blue, uh, someone I knew, um, who I had sold amps to and bought amps from and traded amps, you know. Um, basically, um, well, he texted me and said, hey, I've got this uh, amp for sale. Do you, you want to buy it? Um, um, I go, boy, I don't know. Now, I should tell you that um, he had... I uh, bought an amp for me, and um, you know, and I told him the speaker was a little suspect, you know, and I let him know that. Um, so I thought if I could help this guy out and you know, and buy the amp from him, that would kind of make up for it. And uh, so I went ahead and, and did that, and we're. It turns out it's a PV Bandit 112. Teal Stripe Edition, uh, and it looks like it has a Scorpion, PV Scorpion 12-inch speaker. Um, it's on casters, surprisingly. Um, you know, it's a 1x12 combo amp, uh, two-channel, solid state. Uh, I think it's 80 watts. I'm not positive. I think so. And um, has an FX loop. And it, it's about 40 pounds, so it's a little heavy, I guess. Mm. Now, um, I, I have an amp in the in my living room that I like to play as well, but I kind of want to free it up, um, you know, because it's just something that basically to play on, you know, while I'm watching the news or watching TV or what have you, so it doesn't have to be an extraordinary sound. And quite frankly, the, the amp that I have there is to, really too good to just be a living room amp. So maybe this will um, take care of that. However, um, I've heard on, uh, especially on online that people really rave about these bandit 112s you know and uh, some even you know swear by them and it, it always gets down to you know well there's a teal stripe edition there's a red stripe edition and i think there's a trans tube edition and and then the current edition um I guess they all sound a little different, you know. Whatever. <laughs> I think that's pretty funny. Um, but I think for for the price of these, you know, you can find these really inexpensively uh, used, especially. Now this one is missing the PB logo. Um, but the person has assured me that he ordered one off of eBay and will give it to me when it arrives. So that, that would be good. And as I recall, I had one of the original PV Bandits. I think that was my first real, if you like, real combo guitar amp, from what I recall, was a PV Bandit. Um, so now, you know, whatever, 40 some years later to come back around and, and, and you're still with the Bandit. <laughs> Except now it's the Bandit 112. Back then it was just the PV Bandit. And I always thought the name was terrible then. Um, anyway, I think it's a 
you know, definitely for the price. I mean, you just can't do much better, you know, solid state wise. You know, and I've been on a, a real tube kick lately, you know, tube amp. Um, however, um, I tried a Fender Princeton chorus, and it's a stereo solid state app and I really liked it so so we'll see maybe the PV bandit has a good sound I don't know or maybe terrible or maybe just the perfect thing for what I'm looking for or, or as a practice amp or something like that I don't know we'll find out uh, but first let's take a look at it this is the PV bandit 112 and notice there's some casters here. Right there are the casters. So you can roll it around, I guess. <laughs> um, it's not all that heavy, you know what I mean? For a solid state amp, it's pretty darn heavy though. 40, 40 pounds. So here you can see it's got uh, two inputs, low gain and high gain. Clean channel with EQ, um, lead channel voicing, reverb. Um, I believe that's the original speaker, the Scorpion 12. Though I must admit, it does not have markings on it, or it doesn't have the name Scorpion on it. So I don't know if the label came off or if it's just a, not a Scorpion amp or Scorpion speaker. Hold on a second, it's slipping off of here. So that I'm not sure about. If you look on the back here, there's the speaker. I, I do believe that is a Scorpion 12. It's got a reverb tank. And back here, what is this? Power amp in, preamp out, and then remote switch, foot switch. And this one did come with the, the foot switch, which is right there. Um kind of an open back design and it's got this little panel here very really interesting and the Tolex is very interesting too it's not a it's not the usual Tolex you find on like Fender amps at all but it seems pretty heavy duty whatever it is <laughs> it reminds me of those uh, you know those truck bed liners this kind of material here you know right here it's got a handle seem pretty secure and that's about it here okay so I got the this PV Bandit 112 the teal stripe edition uh, into my studio room and right off the bat I noticed man this amp is loud Without a doubt, that's a loud solid state amp. Um, the second thing I noticed right off the bat is that being on casters, um, and I don't know if it's, it's probably just uh, probably some of the screws, you know, over time have gotten loose and drives me crazy, me, but there's so many amps in here. For the life of me, I can't find a freaking screwdriver. It's hard to believe. I just used it. I don't remember where I put it. Well, anyway. So, probably tightening up all the screws will take care of it. But I'm getting a little rattle. You know, but it's pretty loud. Second thing is, uh, the clean channel. Let's take a listen to it.
there's a clean channel. Hold on a second. My cable's screwing up. has a real nice uh, clean channel. Uh, reverb's very nice too. Uh, yeah, you can hear some of that. Okay, this is without any reverb at all. me crazy that little rattle and you know and usually what it ends up being is that stupid handle on these amps um, you know that volume you know it, it tends to loosen the screws over time really uh, it drives me crazy and 99% of the time it's either the screws on the cabinet are real loose or the, the um, handle and here's another thing by the way this is a big tip for you See these damn things? Okay, foot switch, right? And isn't it wonderful to store the foot switch in the back of the amp? Right? And please don't do this. I mean, it's fine to carry it around and things. But when you're actually using the amp, take the damn foot switch from out of the back of the amp. Okay? Um, it causes all kinds of weird problems, uh, you know, usually half the time it gets stuck to the speaker, screwing up the, you know, the magnetic stuff of the speaker, or it gets on the reverb tank, you know, if it's a spring reverb and so on, you know, and that can give you some hum and noise and things like that, it's just a really bad idea, and I know people do it all the time, because when they get the amp, you know, oh, well, look, there's this foot switch that's in the back of the amp, right? And that's fine to store it, but, man, when you're playing, don't leave it in the back of the amp. You're just asking for problems. You know, just a tip for you, you know? And, I mean, some people go, I do that all the time, never had a problem, you know? But that hasn't been the case for me at all. And I discovered, man, all I had to do was remove the foot switch. You know, I got rid of some hum and that kind of stuff. You know, and weirdness with the speaker and so on. So. Okay, so anyway. So 
but besides the rattle, it's a really nice, clean sound. Now, does it feel like a tube amp? No. I'm sorry, it doesn't. Which is fine, you know, it's not trying to. You know, it's just a solid state. clean sound. Um, very good. Um, now, I'll switch over to the lead channel so you can hear it. And I tried the lead channel and that's a, a, a real uh, beast as well. And in fact, um, it's, it's a little noisy, especially when you got the gain, you know, turned all the way up, um, you know, but it's very loud. So let me try that. Now, one thing that really bugs me, and this is not just this amp, but it's a lot of different amps, okay? When they put two channels in an amp, right? And then they add reverb, right? And, and yet, the reverb is working on both channels, right? No matter, so if you switch, to, you know, from the clean sound to the distorted sound, you have the same amount of reverb. And that's totally pointless. It's the dumbest um, idea for an amp, you know, if you're going to be really using those two channels. Because you may have a really big reverb sound for the clean channel, you know, and a small one for the, for the, the distortion channel. But if they're set the same, you know, the distortion channel then becomes useless. And that's a real shame, I think. I don't know why they do that. I, mean, I guess to save money or whatever, but it's a really crappy um, amp design. You know, and it's not just this amp. I'm not, uh, you know, blaming PB or anything. I mean, a lot of amps do that. You know, and it's a real shame uh, because you, you really can't you, you, you can't use both channels if you're using the reverb unless you've got a foot switch I guess to turn it off when you're using the lead channel so this is just a distortion channel on the PB here sound almost like the PV Classic 30. Very similar distortion that round. You know, we do that kind of ACDC stuff. You know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> 
here are my thoughts on the PB Bandit 112. Um, it's kind of a heavy amp, I guess it's about 40 pounds. Um, now, this particular one is on casters. It's convenient, you know, I suppose. Um, does it really need casters? No. No, and I wonder if that doesn't contribute to some of the rattle. Um, not sure, or if it's just, you know, loose screws on the handle or what have you. I think it has a very nice clean channel. And the gain channel, with a lot of tweaking, can be decent. Too, you know, I mean, I didn't spend very much time, you know, tweaking the knob. But that's what I found is... I'm not so much on the clean channel, but especially on the lead channel, you know, um, moving the, the mids, scooping out the mids, or adding the mids, and so on, and the uh, presence, and so on, the treble, you know, basically the EQ section, to give you a real nice um, distorted sound. Um, now, I remember that the original PB Bandit, that was like my first combo amp I ever owned, and it was a good practice amp. Um, here, um, I think it's, um, for a solid state amp, it, it is very good. Now, does it compete with a tube amp? Not for that kind of sound. It just doesn't, you know, and the feel isn't there. However, uh, for a solid state amp, it's actually very good. You know, um, that's the one thing. The feel is not bad at all. I mean, never once I, did I think to myself while I was playing, boy, I wish this felt like a tube amp, you know, kind of thing. And there are solid state amps where I think that immediately. Uh, but this isn't one of them. The, 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 you know, the power amp section, while it's solid state, is actually pretty warm and, and, and you know, has some nice compression to it, feel-wise, you know. Um, now, keep in mind, too, this thing is incredibly loud. I mean, you could definitely play, you know, in any band situation. And I bet recording, and I'm going to do some recording with it, and we'll see. I'll probably make another video further down the line. Um, now, the Teal Edition, I guess, has a Scorpion speaker. And I find that to be a very, very good speaker. Um, just like all the PBs, though, uh, you know, it doesn't have all that much low end, really. You know, and on top of that, it's a solid state amp. But that doesn't mean it's thin sounding. Um, it just doesn't have an overwhelming, you know, bass sound. Um... But it's a well-balanced sound, I think. Um, and keep in mind, price-wise, on these amps, you know, and these are built like tanks. They really are. I mean, PV amps just seem to last and last and last and last. Um, with very few problems, you know. Maybe sometimes, the, you know, the input jack will kind of get loose and so on over time, you know, from being plugged in, you know, over the years, and we're talking years here, um, so I can't, can't really, um, complain it, and for the price, you know, and we're talking, you can find these used, um, like, usually, you know, somewhere between maybe, uh, well, I don't know, I'd say probably, like, um, 150 to 250 is probably about average used price, you know, depending. Now, of course, you know, you'll get the guy, you know, man, I was at a garage sale, I picked one up for 25 cents. And then right next to it, they had a, you know, a 1954 pre CBS Fender Stratocaster, and that was only a dollar. You know, that kind of thing, you know. Man, I walked into my grandmother's garage and there it was you know uh, a brand new you know Fender Stratocaster still in the case you know from 1960 or, you know, 
Man, I hear that all the damn time, especially online. You know, oh man, yeah, I got this app for a dollar from my buddy. You know, turns out it's worth you know three thousand dollars or you know that kind of stuff. But in reality, you know, definitely. I mean, you could definitely find one of these. You know, um, they're all over the place. I mean, they're in pawn shops and. So on, uh, for you know, I'd say two fifty or under, and two fifty is, you know, pretty pretty high price really. It depends on the condition too, you know, and that's the thing. I mean, these things are built like tanks. So, do I recommend it? Yes, I do. I, I really do. I think it'd be a good amp. Um, now, in that same price range, you're starting to get into. Especially on the higher end, it's starting to get into finding a used, you know, Bugera V22 tube amp. Um, however, I would say, um, for probably, you know, beginner to advanced, or I shouldn't say advanced, I guess intermediate player, for most people, basically, um, the PV. You know, it does a, a fine job, I mean, you know, and you can definitely, you know, play in, with bands and things and practice, and, and it's a good, uh, you know, knockabout amp, if you like, a, a real, you know, the kind of amp that you, you know, you throw in the back of your car and take it, you know, somewhere where you play, a, you know, a bar or something. Or it's going to take a beating, you know. Um, and I mean, I'm sorry if you're not, you know, if you're just playing in like a bar band or something, you know, no point in bringing, a, you know, a twelve hundred dollar uh, tube amp, you know, that's going to get beat up and stuff. And this is a good alternative, you know. Um, because it's inexpensive. So as far as solid state amps, I think it's a really great amp. It's not bad. And for the price, I mean, you just can't go wrong, you know. Um, I don't know. When I see, a, you know, people raving about, hey, man, I got this, you know, little tiny, <laughs> tiny amp, you know, about this big for $100. You know, well, you're not far off from a PV bandit that'll eat that thing for breakfast. You know, and the sound quality is really good. I mean, yeah, I'm really impressed with it. Um, yeah. Now, my particular one, if I could get rid of that stupid rattle, that drives me crazy. Mm. And you know, I had a, the Fender X2s, um, a lot of those, they had a cabinet rattle and so on, and a lot of times it was a handle, you know, and it's just the loose screws, and I mean, we're talking any screw you can find, you know, <laughs> just tighten it, and uh, usually that'll, that'll go away. Um, the other thing is, uh, especially in my little studio room, uh, I mean, I've got stuff, you know, it's kind of piling up all over the place. I've got computer parts, CDs, uh, you know, um, loose cables and rack stuff. And, and basically what I'm saying is, uh, at loud volumes, you know, that stuff's going to start to rattle too, you know, because the vibrations and so on. Why, you know, if you have a studio room, you want to keep it as simple as possible with the least amount of stuff in it, really. You know, I'm learning that the hard way. Uh, you know, now, um, well, I guess this is the kind of amp. Um, now, would I sell this amp or would I keep it? I'm always on the lookout for a. 
a real inexpensive amp that sounds good, you know, um, that, you know, it's just, for me, it's just kind of a, a living room amp, you know, while you're watching a movie or there, you know, you have a little amp and when you feel like playing, you can just pick it up and play. And over and over again, I guess I tend to, um, over by, uh, because this amp it, is very loud and, um, is really a, a great amp for, uh, recording or, you know, you know, overall it's almost too much amp for the living room, you know, but that's not to say obviously, you know, if you live in a small apartment and things, Obviously, you can turn it down. I mean, <laughs> it has a volume knob, you know. And because it's solid state, it doesn't really need to get really loud, you know, to give you the sound that it can give you. Unlike a tube amp that does need to be turned up. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, yeah, so in that sense, it's a really, really cool amp, I think. Uh, I don't see why people like it, you know. It's a, it's a fun amp. Um, but, it's a fun amp, however, it's not a toy, don't get me wrong. I mean, this thing can become a beast very quickly. And that's kind of the nice thing is, you know, if you're playing, you know, in a band or whatever, and they have a loud drummer, and it's kind of a loud band. I mean, this will have no problems, you know, cutting through there. So there you go, you know. I think, uh, you know, does it compare, you know, to the $1,000 tube amp? No, of course not. You know, but for solid state, I think it's really good. You know, um... And there are many situations where you don't really want a tube amp, either because you don't want to put wear and tear on the tubes, you know, on the tube amp itself. Um, and so this would be no problem. If I was playing in, you know, in bars all the time and, you know, people might spill a drink on it or cotton or what else. Um, I'd have no problem, you know, bringing the PB Bandit 112, it'd be fine. Um, takes pedals well. Um, it does have an effects loop, surprisingly enough. Um, so there you go. And I guess, um, yeah, I, I will record with it and make a video and see how that goes. You know, um... And, and I don't have two of these, so I'm going to use a different amp to see how it reacts uh, or sound, you know, sounds like in stereo. It'll be very interesting to see. For some reason, I don't know what it is, but the PVs tend to work really well with another amp. I, I don't know why that is, at least to my ear. It, it seems to work that way. Where there are some amps, man, they, they just don't like it. It just doesn't work. Or it doesn't sound all that great, you know, combining it with another amp. But the PBs always seem to do well. And, I'm sorry, for the price, it's a real bargain. You know, and I don't know what these amp companies are thinking. I mean, I, I've seen, you know, little amps, you know, and, and they're real cheap and so on. But, and the sound quality is just terrible, you know, really crummy. Um, I don't know what they're thinking. They think that people are going to buy it, I guess, because it's new or whatever. But the second they hear it, they're like, Psh, man, that's horrible. Um, and I don't see the PV Bandit that way. It's not a, it's not a cheap amp sound, if you like. So anyway, that's a nice surprise, a nice discovery. So, and that came out of nowhere, right, you know? Um, not quite sure what I'll do with it yet, you know? 
Um, I'll record with it and see if it'll, you know, sometimes I don't want to put wear and tear on my tube amps, you know. Uh, when I'm practicing or, you know, trying to learn something or, or just kind of screw around playing, you know. Um, this would be a perfect amp to do that, you know. And yet, at the same time, you can play with a band, you can record with it. So it's a good, good quality amp, I think. And same thing, I mean, it's built like a tank. It really, you know, there's nothing cheap about it. Now, in my particular one, um, obviously I hadn't been played in a while, and um, like all amps, you know, if they sit around unused, um, dust gets in there in the pots and then, you, know, you know, they get scratchy and so on, you know. But, you know, turning them left and right and, uh, you know, some electronic cleaner there usually clears that right up. And I, I hear it a little bit on, on a couple of things, but not too badly at all, you know. Um, that's the other thing, you know, unlike a tube amp, you can leave it on for a long time uh, without it, you know, heating up. You know, that's the one thing with a tube amp, you know, you can't really do that. All right, so there you go. There's a PV Bandit 112. Um, nice amp. Uh, definitely a bargain. You know, it really is a bargain. It's a budget amp, and... Um, you know, for most players, uh, is, a, is a decent amp, I mean, you know, um, not bad at all. Alright, see you next time. Bye.